What about national health care? Well, you know me, I'm, I think we need to have a public option in there. Um, I think that's one of the reasons the president was elected to fight for something like that. I hope he will continue to fight for it. It's, it, it, it's of opinion by many that he probably won't get that, but he might get 70 percent of what he may have to compromise here. Yeah, and I, I just think hate that, to see that I hate to see that happen. But if I we mean, get 70 percent and then things get, you know, we get some... some there's two issues, you know, there's the reform issue. Clearly the whole health care system in the country needs to be reformed um, because it's too expensive and when we're compared to other industrialized countries. Um, do we have good care when we need it here? Yes, we do. But as a society, you know, our rates of infant mortality and life expectancy and all these kinds of things are well below most industrialized countries. And the reason is because the whole population doesn't have regular access to preventive medical care. So people get, by the time they get into the system, they're sicker, they require more services, they're more expensive. They are, you know, going to emergency rooms for routine stuff, and we all end up paying for that in our insurance rates. It's just the system is broken. Um, do you get insurance? I do get insurance, yeah. And how do you get it? I have insurance through the town of Nantucket. Oh, yeah. that is good. I'm a very lucky guy. I, I don't complain about my job at all. I'm happy. You still like your job? I love my job, you, yeah. You like being the chairman? Um, I do like being chairman. It has its... It's uh, pluses and minuses, but I, I enjoy it. Um, we've got a really diverse board, you know, and uh, keeping the team working together can be a challenge sometimes, but it's, it's very rewarding when we do. What, what do we need to be aware of these days? Uh, money, it's like the town manager said, you know. Um, there's no money, you know, really. Uh, you can't get blood from a stone. And, you know, there's a lot of mythology about all the fat in government that can be cut and all this other stuff. You know, it's just not the case. You just interviewed a group of town managers and, and town administrators. These are, these are the people that make things happen, that run the town, and they're having to keep services coming and keep the town running with less and less and less. What I don't understand is if we haven't lowered the tax base, most right. of our revenue comes from property, property taxes. taxes. Yep. So if we haven't lowered those, are people just not paying their property taxes? No, I think it's the cost of things rises every year. I mean, you, you, you just think about it in your own life. You know, your electric bills go up every year. Gas goes up all the time, you know, health care. You know, all of these costs go up and up and up. And the same is true for the town. All the services the town has to buy, those costs go up and up and up. And the town is allowed to increase property taxes by 2.5% under Prop 2.5 every year. Uh, and every town pretty much just rolls that in, and the 2.5. Anything above that requires an override. So when you've got, you know, employment contracts and, and union contracts that are growing faster than two and a half percent. If you've got other expenses that are growing faster than two and a half percent, you can see those lines are going to cross at some point and they're crossing. What's the biggest expense the town has? Is personnel. Personnel. Yeah, payroll and benefits is 80, I think a little over 80 percent of the town budget. And there, I should point out, there's nothing wrong with that. Because the town is in, is in the business of providing services. And those services are provided by people. And the town is in the payroll business. We're in the so business what is of the, what is the most people. expensive department? The most the expensive department? Yeah. The and school what, has police? a big budget. Um, what would be the next most expensive department? Yeah, I guess public safety, you know, police and fire would probably be... Uh, the next biggest expense, although I don't not have the numbers in front of me, I could right. be wrong. You know. Yeah. Um, but it's all expensive. You know, and the police department is down seven positions last time I heard. Unfilled positions. Well, that makes sense. 
Well, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of cops here. Well, we do, we? but uh, well, no, not not on the no. year-round permanent force. No. no. But in the summertime. In the summertime, we have a lot of summer specials. We need them. There's no question about that. When you go from a population of 15,000 to 50,000, you know, you need more eyes and ears out there. And um, some people would argue that. They're yeah, That's I, I don't think I don't think the issue is with necessarily with too many. I because I think we were down actually summer specials this summer as well for budgetary reasons. But one of the problems with that, and I've talked to the chief about this, is these these are kids. You know, most of them are in college, or criminal justice school, and uh, they want to be cops, and they're they're well-meaning kids. Yeah, but you know, they come down here and they have like a week's training. And to get to know Nantucket, to get to know how we do things here, to get to know what it's like, and then they're out there in the field, and that's a tough, that's a tough managerial thing for the chief. And I think he he does a pretty good job with what he's got to work with. And the um, new police station. New police you station. Getting, you hearing any flack from people in the street about that? No. Okay. There no. was a little bit. Though. Yeah, but uh, what I hear from most people is. Let's get this thing done. You know, we voted for it. We, you know, it took a lot of these big capital projects. Sometimes they take a couple of years to get approved because, you know, I, I agreed after the after it lost the first year, we needed to get some citizens in to look at this thing and vet the thing and make recommendations on what would be a better option. And we we took that recommendation from the citizens committee, and that's what we're doing. Right. And we've got all this county money on the table right now that if we go forward it's committed to the project and there are a whole lot of reasons all coming together to get this done now. You know, you heard from the Harwich guy, he's got one of the best school systems in the state. Yep. Yep. Right? Yeah. And he's got a, they, they, that's a, an affluent town. It is, so but, we. but you can, you know, school system isn't you, like can, you can teach in Harwich and live in Barnstable, you know, and commute. Find an affordable housing situation. But why can't we get that for people there. here? Why can't we make that happen? Well, I think that's what we're trying to do with a yeah. lot of this affordable housing. You know, and, and I hear a lot because the economy's down. You know, why don't we wait on all the affordable housing stuff? Because there's so much that costs come down. You know, these kinds of things take years to get done. Years, and we've all lived through cycles of boom and bust on Nantucket. We know at some point things are going to start booming again. And we need to have these, this housing in place for when that time comes. You know, and it's the stability of affordable housing that's so important. And because, the kind of housing, yeah, too. When, when Not you're, just... Uh, first of all, you, 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 you know, can't you expect nice a teacher to move here, start a family, become part of the community if they're having to do the shuffle every year. That's out of the question. But even if they're in a rental that, you know, if the market comes back, and the landlord decides, well, I can make more renting this weekly in the summer, sorry, you're out. It's the stability, the long-term stability of affordable housing. That's really the important component. Well, That's I think we're doing a lot. I, you know, we're doing way more about affordable housing now than we ever have. You know, the housing authority has got 50 units of ownership going to go into Surfside. We've got, um, you know, something like 65 to 80 units going in at Two Fairgrounds Road. Um, a lot of that's going to be rental units, which I think is also a really important part of the Nantucket economy. So there's a lot of affordable housing stuff going on. We're, and then with the economy the way it stuff. is, you know, even on the free market, you, prices have come way down. They have. And there's a, in, you know, there's a glut. Yep. So. But that's a cycle, you know. We, know, we know that's we know here now and it's going to... Change. I, I'm really optimistic about next season, next summer, because I think that watching the stock market and you know other economic indicators, it seems like whatever the government's doing is starting to creep back. You know, things seem to be going kind of two steps forward, one step back, mm. and that's progress. It's slow progress, but it's forward progress. So I think this winter is going to be tough for Nantucketers. Up for a lot of these merchants downtown yeah. with the rents. Yeah, and the and the people in the trades, building trades, trades, who have been they've it's been getting be in the tough. neck for a year already. I thought last winter was tough. I think this was going to be a little tougher. I do too, but I think uh, that we're going to bounce back fairly strong next season.